Note, this video is part of a larger series on speed solving the FTO. Click the playlist link in the description to see the rest of the videos. This video illustrates a technique which I have found that can be used in certain cases for L3T that enables you to force a corner permutation skip at the end of the solve, or really a TCP skip. This effectively means you can finish off the entire L3T purely with flips and AUFs, making it more efficient and ergonomic at the same time. By using OPF strategies, it takes advantage of the cases where you have more than one option for your pair formation, and you are effectively choosing the one that ultimately gives you the skip at the end. Here's a quick example for this L3T case. You can see that we can form two standard pairs on the bottom here like this by turning the top layer to align them. However, notice that in reality, there are actually three ways we can align the layer to make a valid pair formation. This way for the standard, or this way, and this way for an OPF. Now, if I just naively make the standard pairs and then finish off the pair formation from here, I end up having to finish with a TCP algorithm, or alternately, triangle permutation and then corner permutation. But going back to this case, I know that if I choose these particular pairs here and then flip these two triples up top to finish the rest of the pair formation, I'm actually left with a simple flip to finish the whole puzzle, which is far better. So this technique can be incredibly useful for those situations where it can be applied. But as a fair warning, it is not a simple trick, with the required recognition varying widely from case to case. And on top of that, not all L3T cases can even be forced in the first place. So I will be showing each of the good cases that I think are worth learning and how to recognize them in this video. I recommend that you have already watched my advanced last three triples video before jumping into this, as many of the concepts from that video will apply to this. This includes the terminology stuff such as CO, the bottom versus top triangles, even odd permutations, and all of that. Once you've familiarized yourself with it, we can go ahead and move on. Now, on to the cases. I have tried my best to organize these very meticulously to attempt to avoid too much confusion, so here's how it works. There are three factors to determine which specific type of L3T case you have in this context. Whether or not your corners are oriented, how many bottom triangles are on your top face, or effectively in your lower layer, and whether those triangles are in an even or odd permutation state. These are the three properties that I mentioned earlier that you should review. Now, the last one, the even odd permutation state of your bottom triangles is very important as it significantly changes how the setups work and whether a case can be good or not. It can be easy at first to accidentally confuse these types of permutations in the solve, so you do need to be careful with that. So now, within each of those L3T case types that are again determined by those factors, your corner pieces then need to be recognized by their permutation, whether they are solved, like in this one right here, or, if they are not solved, whether they are clockwise or anti-clockwise from solved. Note the emphasis here. So, for example, this is a clockwise CP from the solved state. As you can see, this corner moved to here, which is clockwise. Here is an example of an anti-clockwise corner permutation from the solved state. As you can see, this one moved to here, which is this way. This recognition can be pretty tricky at first, so just remember to bear in mind what you're looking for. Now, with all that being defined, this is going to be how I'm going to present each of these cases to you. I will be showing each major case, which are those L3T case types, as I mentioned previously, that are determined by those factors. And then further show the three sub-cases, depending on the corner permutation state. Note that not all subcases are actually defined by the CP itself, but they are influenced by it. And again, I will explain this. Each subcase has a specific solution for the pair formation, which either guarantees a skip at the end, or it doubles the chances of getting a skip to 66% of the time. And I will also explain why later once we get to an example of that. In other words, there is a specific recognition to determine exactly what that pair formation is and what you want to solve. And that's what I'm going to be providing for each case and subsequent subcase. Okay, I know that was probably pretty wordy, but I do hope that as I show the different solutions, it will make more sense. So let's go ahead and dive in. 
All right, here is the first major case. What we have is all of our corners are oriented. There's one bottom triangle on this top face here, and the triangles are in an even permutation state. In this case, we can tell this because neither of these two bottom triangles are solved here, and they also don't need to swap places directly. So we know that this can be solved with three cycles, which is why it's an even state. This is also the first subcase where our corners are solved relative to our top layer. For this one, the solution is to rotate the top layer so that our bottom triangle that's on top is directly above its matching slot. As you can see, this yellow is above this yellow slot. Now this color could be a different triangle, but the point is to match it over its matching slot. You'll notice that this gives us two pairs. These could be OPF pairs or regular pairs, so that could mix and just keep that in mind. The point is we have two valid pairs, and so now we want to flip these two pairs to the top. And in this case, any flip works. What I usually like to do is force this triangle to be in this back left slot if possible. And that gives a little bit of better ergonomics for the rest of the solution. So in this case, I'll do a hedge. And now we'll finish our pair formation from here. And now this guarantees the skip. So now if we finish this, we skip our CP. It is important to note that sometimes this is actually not possible. In this case, I have this light blue triangle on top. And if we rotate it over here, you can see that it's on the opposite end. And when we flip these two pairs, we're not going to be flipping this triangle to the bottom. When this comes up, it means the case is actually not skippable. There is no way to keep this triangle within those two triples and still have it above its matching slot. And what that means is we have no choice but to solve this normally. Now here is the second subcase that can come up. In this case, we see that our corners are not solved and we have that triangle on top here and neither of these slots here match the color of that triangle. So it's almost sort of like that unskippable case we had before except now our corners aren't solved. The nice thing is that this actually makes this case skippable. Recognizing this, we have a clockwise CP and for a clockwise CP, we want to rotate this triangle to be over the right slot, like it is over here. So if this is on the left, this is on the right. And as you can see, the triangle is over the right slot, which is what we want. And now we want to flip these two OPF pairs to the top. And we want to avoid the two flip case by making sure that this triangle does not end up in the solved slot. So in this case, that's going to be a sledge. And now finishing the pair formation, this guarantees the skip. Here's that same case, but with a counterclockwise CP. And for this one, we want to rotate the triangle so it's over the left slot, so we can see here. And this time, we'll be doing a hedge to avoid the two flip. And finishing the pair formation. Again, this guarantees the skip. And this is the final subcase for this one. What we have is, again, our CP is not solved. But this time, as you can see, when we have this bottom triangle, we actually are able to match it over a slot that is the same color. This is probably the most difficult case out of this subset. And what we want to do is we want to actually take this top triangle and match it over the wrong slot color. So unlike the very first subcase where we matched it over the, the matching slot, we want to match it over the unmatching slot. So that would be this one, this one on the left here. And here I actually get two standard pairs, but sometimes you'll get OPF, obviously. Now from here to solve this, again, we want to flip these two triples. And again, we want to avoid the two flip case. So that's going to be a sledge from here. And this time I got the skip, as you can see. But it's important to note that this is one of those cases, kind of like I'd mentioned earlier, where you're not guaranteed to skip, you're only twice as likely to skip. And here's an example where we now have this again. We see pretty much the same situation, so we're going to rotate this triangle to be over the non-matching slot. And again, we'll avoid the two-flip case. Flip this way. But you can see this time, we don't skip the CP. And this was a bit unlucky. So now the question is, why does that happen? So unfortunately, this is a little bit hard to explain. But if we take this particular case here and we only change the CP, so if I were to do a CP alg, you can see we get a slightly different case, but effectively the same scenario that we had before. 
at the very beginning when our CP was solved, right? And remember that for this one, what we had to do was match the triangle over the matching slot to skip the CP. But there are two other ways our corners could be permuted here. And the one where it skips by matching over the non-matching slot is this one right here, and this one will skip. But of course, there's the third CP that you can have, which is this one. And for this one, you can see that we run out of options, right? We can't match it over here and we can't match it over here, and obviously we can't match it over here because that just makes our case bad. What I'm trying to say is that the distribution of the skippable versus non-skippable cases is not symmetrical across each subcase. And this is just due to the geometry and the way the puzzle works, and that's really all I can leave it at. Remember, like I said in the beginning, this is absolutely not a trivial thing. And it takes a lot of practice to get used to being able to recognize, oh, yes, I can skip this case, or no, no, I can't. But overall, that does it for the first major case. Here is the next major case that I would like to show. For this one, again, all of our corners are oriented. We have one bottom triangle on top. But this time, our triangles are in an odd permutation state. And we can tell it for this one because one is salt, but the other is not. And you'll either have that or the two triangles in this lower layer will have to swap places. This one is a little bit trickier, but again, we can go through each of these subcases. For this major case, we always want to start off by taking this top triangle and rotating it over the empty slot, like I have done right here. So this one is here, and then the other two bottom triangles are here. For the first subcase where our CP is solved, what we want to do is we want to flip the two triples that contain this top triangle and have a matching slot with that triangle. So in this case, that's going to be these two because we have this light blue, and then here's the light blue slot, so we want to flip these two triples. So we can go ahead and do that here. And now we want to finish our pair formation as normal. And as you can see, this guarantees the skip. Now again, for this case, sometimes that's not going to be possible because the top triangle will end up matching over the empty slot, which has the same color as that triangle. So for when you run into this situation, this is not skippable, and we just have to solve it like normal. Okay, here is the second subcase for this one. Our corners are not solved, as you can see, and our bottom triangle actually matches over the empty slot like this. So holding it kind of from this angle with this kind of towards the back, what we do is we check our CP and see which case we have, and this is kind of like that other case we saw earlier. If we have a clockwise CP, which I do in this example right here, then we're gonna flip the right triple and this back triple with the triangle. If we have a counterclockwise CP, then we're going to flip the left triple and that triangle. So this one, for example, I have a clockwise CP, as we can see. So I'm going to be flipping these two triples here. Either way works. Now we're going to finish the pair formation like normal. And as you can see, this guarantees the skip. And now for the final subcase for this one, what we have again is our corners are unsolved, but now the bottom triangle does not match the empty slot color, as we can see. For this one, we kind of do the very opposite of that first case, kind of like what we saw for the first major case, um, before we would flip the two triples that match the triangle and the slot. This time we flip the one that does not match. So in this case, we will be flipping this triple here, which has the yellow triangle, and this triple, which has the non-yellow slot color like this. So we're gonna flip these two. And again, like before, this only skips two-thirds of the time, unfortunately. So we'll go ahead and flip these two. And then we finish the pair formation as normal. And in this example, I got the skip. Pretty nice. I hope that as you're starting to see some of these cases that this is starting to make a little bit more sense on how this recognition works. It is still very confusing at first. So just know that and know that this does take getting used to. But it is very helpful if you can get the hang of it. Here is the third major case that I will show. For this case, we only have one corner oriented, so two are not oriented, so we don't have corners oriented. We have no bottom triangles on this top side, so these are all the top color triangles, and our bottom triangles are in an odd permutation state, like this. As you can see, we can tell that because just two of them have to swap places. Luckily, this case doesn't have any weird two-thirds of the time skips. This one can actually be skipped every single time, so I highly recommend learning this one. 
For the first subcase, which is where our CP is solved, what we do is we take the oriented corner and we rotate the top layer so that the oriented corner is over the solved triangle like this. And now this is going to be our first pair. And all we have to do is just flip this triple any way we want. So in this case, I'm just gonna do a hedge to flip it over. We don't have to worry about these back ones at all, just as long as we flip this one. So I'll do a hedge from here. And now we can finish as normal. And once you look at that, we get the skip. Very easy. And here is the second subcase for this one, and really the only other subcase we have here. For this one, we can see that our corners are not permuted correctly. This one is a little bit trickier, but still not too bad. What we need to look at is see which CP we have. If we have a clockwise CP, like we do here, and you can tell this by looking at the oriented corner and seeing where it came from. So it came from here, so that's clockwise. So we're gonna rotate the top layer so the oriented corner is now over the back right triangle from the perspective of the, um, the solved bottom triangle here. For a counterclockwise CP, we would rotate the oriented corner so it's over the back left triangle. But for my case, it's clockwise, so we rotate it to here. And again, we need to flip this back triple here in any way we want because this is going to be our pair. So again, I'll just do a hedge, why not? And now we finish pair formation as normal. And here we go. Skip CP again. Cool. And that's all you need to learn for that major case. It's quite an easy one, actually, and I do recommend it. All right, so now I'm going to go into some major cases that are a little bit different in how they work, but they lead into the other cases that I covered previously. So these are actually really nice. Here's the first one. We only have one corner oriented, so we do not have corner orientation. We have all of our bottom triangles on top here, and they are in an even permutation state. Effectively, another way to recognize this is that we have a completed pair formation, but one triangle is flipped up to the top like this. And keep in mind, this could be a standard or an offset pair formation. We can actually transform this case into the very first major case by doing a single flip, and here's how we do that. If we have a standard pair formation like we do here, what we want to do is we want to unsolve the top layer. So I actually want to do an AUF here to unsolve it like this. It doesn't matter which direction. And then we want to flip these two triples, the ones that have the pairs, such that these bottom triangles remain unsolved. Now from this orientation, you might notice that it doesn't matter which flip that we do, and this is totally fine, but let's say we were to do the AUF this way, then you might see that if we were to do a hedge, it would actually solve this pink and this yellow, and we don't want to do that. So if we were to orient it this way, we would actually want to do a sledge. So let's actually go with this just as example. We're going to do a sledge to flip these two so that the bottom triangles remain unsolved. And you can now see that we have case one. And here, we have the first subcase, the CP is solved, so we're gonna rotate this triangle to match over its slot and flip these two for the OPF. And that is a very, very nice finish. And here's the other subcase for this one where we have an OPF. And for this one, we kinda of wanna do the opposite. Instead, we want to solve the top layer like this. And again, we want to flip to make sure that the bottom triangles remain unsolved for these two triples. So in this case, that's gonna be a sledge because we don't want that you know, pink to go here. So we'll do a sledge here. And again, we have major case one and it's solved in the same way. All right, and here is the final major case that I will be showing in this video. We have only one corner oriented, so we do not have CO. We have all our bottom triangles on top again, but this time we have an odd permutation state. And we can tell that because one of the pairs will be solved, the other unsolved, or these two will need to switch places. This time we're going back to recognizing the subcases by the CP, so I do want to say that right here. For the first subcase where CP is solved, like this one, what we want to do is unsolve the lone triangle, which is this one. So that means we're going to rotate it away from its bottom slot. And we're simply going to flip the two triples that do not contain that slot. So in this case, we don't want to flip this triple because that's where that pink slot is. So we're going to flip these two. So we'll go ahead and do that. And the flip, it doesn't matter. We can do it in either direction. So flip like this. And then we'll finish the pair formation as normal. And there's our CP skip.
And here is the second subcase for this one where the CP is unsolved, as we can see here. And again, this is kind of the only other subcase we have. For this one, we kind of want to do the opposite. We want to take that lone triangle and we want to solve it over its matching slot like this. And now it simply comes down to our CP, which two triples we flip. For a clockwise CP, like the one I have right here, we're going to flip the right two triples. If we have a counterclockwise CP, we're going to flip the left two triples. So for my case, I'm going to go ahead and flip these two because I have a clockwise, so the right two. And then we finish the pair formation as normal. And there is our skip. Awesome. So these are not all of the last three triple cases that you can get, obviously, but I do think these cases are really the only ones worth learning, if I'm going to be completely honest. A lot of the other ones have really hard recognition or are just really not worth it in the long term. But hopefully these cases make your some of your last three triple solutions a little bit nicer. I have been using this technique for quite a long time, many, many months. And I can confidently say that it does make some of my solves turn out much better than they would if I hadn't used it. Again, the nice thing with these is that if you recognize you have one of these cases, then you know that you can solve it exclusively with flips and AUF, so there's no need to rotate and do TCP stuff at the end. You just know, just go into the form mover, no need to reorient the puzzle, and you will skip. So this is easily the most complicated and difficult technique that I have found and developed for FTO as of yet. But I do think it's actually one of the more useful ones, and I would recommend at least giving it a try and seeing if you can start implementing some of those cases into the solving. I would also like to say that this is going to be the last video in this whole series that I make for the time being. If there are new methods or developments from other people, or you know, even from myself, then of course I'll make another video, but for now, this is going to be the end of this advanced tutorial series. I really want to thank everyone for supporting and watching this through and supporting this project. It's been a lot of work, but I can also tell that this has really helped grow solving of this puzzle, and I can't wait to see what happens in the future with it. That's it for this video. Be sure to check out the others through the playlist link in the description. Nice.